With the bulk of the Prusa Mini Plus 3D printer complete and built now, it's time to start wrapping up with the last few components after which we will have completed the entire build, namely the LCD assembly and electronics. We'll start directly with the LCD assembly itself. Now this comes pre-assembled, so you'll find the display already seated within its 3D printed outer shell. So in essence, we just need to get it attached and plugged into the main unit. To do that, start by rotating the printer carefully onto its side. This will make attaching the LCD much easier. After which we can take a single M3x20 screw and drive it into the threads located on the printer's side, where the LCD will eventually be attached. We're doing this just to clean the threads for the moment, so once done, remove the screw. And now place the LCD assembly into position, before inserting the screw a final time. The design does allow you to reorientate the display into your desired position, which you can do now or later, before tightening the screw to hold that position. Now carefully remove the free end of the LCD cable from the box with the electronics, and guide the cable between the Y-axis motor cable and the extrusion, before connecting it to the rear of the LCD board, taking care with orientation of course. There is a notch present so it can generally only go in one way. Finally, tidy up carefully folding and inserting the cable into the extrusion. Take care to leave some slack at the display end, just in case you wish to reorientate the display later. And that's pretty much all there is to it. The display assembly is now connected and complete. We'll move to the electronics box next and getting everything plugged in and connected. Orientate the printer so that you have easy and clear access to the rear electronics box, after which we'll start with the main power switch, sliding the cables from the power switch through the hole in the side, and pushing the power button into place. Note orientation here, the off switch should be on the right side. We can now connect the other end onto the main electronics board. The order of cable connections, polarity and orientation doesn't matter. What does matter is getting the spot of course, and making sure the connectors are fully seated and connected. So once double checked, push the cables down so that they don't protrude from the tray. With that done, we'll go ahead and connect all other cables into place. We're going to start from the top and work in a clockwise direction. So at the top we begin by attaching the extruder cable, labelled E, and next is the superpinder sensor cable, followed by the print fan cable, note of Mr. Port intentionally here, we'll come back to that shortly. Next is the hot end fan cable, so the fan attached to the heatsink. Then in the opposite corner it's the hot end thermistor cable, and the hot end cable itself. That just leaves our two heat bed cables, so the heat bed thermistor cable, again in bottom left, and the final heat bed cable. Double check all connections, they must exactly match what you see here. If any cables are connected in the wrong places, it will cause your printer to fail or operate erratically, so it's best to double and triple check all connections at this point. If you purchase the printer along with the optional filament sensor, which is highly recommended, now is the time to get the sensor constructed and connected. So with all the filament sensor parts together, we begin with the small IR sensor. So start by connecting the IR sensor to the IR sensor cable, making sure that the clip on the connector and the notch on the sensor are on the same side. Orientation is important here. On to the sensor housing next, where I've inserted one of the two supplied magnets into the top corner, after which we can insert the sensor assembly down into place, making sure the cable is still under the sensor, also ensuring the hole in the sensor lines up with the hole in the outer casing, before securing with a single M2 by 8 screw, which goes through the hole in the sensor to the opposite side. Take care not to pinch the cables and do not over tighten. Next, insert the steel ball into the designated hole, before inserting the printed lever into position, and securing it with a single M3 by 12 screw. Do not over tighten this screw, the lever must be able to move freely. We need to insert the second magnet now, but carefully so that they repel each other. So loosely insert the second magnet into the lever, and move the lever to test and ensure they repel each other, and once confirmed, push the magnet all the way down into position. 
This is an important step as otherwise the sensor will not work. Once verified, wrap the textile sleeve around the filament sensor cable and slide it into the box as far as possible before placing the cover on top and securing with two M3 by 12 screws. We're going into plastic here, so just tighten enough until snug. Onto the included small PTFE tube now, which is inserted into the sensor assembly on the opposite side to the textile sleeve, as far as it will go. Which end doesn't matter as both ends are chamfered. Next, we insert and slightly tighten the M3x12 screw. Do not tighten the screw all the way just yet. It will be tightened later. So now we need to slide the longer filament tube from the extruder into the sensor assembly from the opposite side, so just above the textile sleeve. There is a groove in the side where we can check how far the tube has been inserted. It needs to go all the way into the end of the groove, as otherwise the sensor will not work correctly. After which we can tighten the screw gently to ensure the PTFE tube stays in position and doesn't slide out with use. Use a piece of filament now and slide it through the filament sensor to ensure the proper functioning of the tube. In case of any resistance, release the screw slightly. Finally, connect the filament sensor cable to the buddy board, second port down on the right side. Coincidentally, the port we missed out earlier. Once happy, we can proceed to installing the top cover, making sure all cables are securely within the tray. The tray is small and you'll find plenty of slack in the cables, so it may not be the neatest of jobs. More importantly, check to ensure that the M3 square nut is correctly positioned in the tray just here, making sure it doesn't fall out into the electronics area. Next, notice the two small teeth in the cover. These slot into the grooves on the bottom end of the tray, after which we can pivot the cover down into place and cover with a small top plate. We have three bundles to take care of at the top. The extruder bundle should be tilted away from the printer, the filament sensor bundle at the top, and the remaining heat bed bundle coming out the right side. Tighten with a single M3 by 12 screw. Notice how a part of the textile sleeve from each bundle should feed into the cover so that it's secured into place. And with that, we're done. The Prusa Mini Plus 3D printer is completely assembled and ready to be calibrated and used. There's no way to mount a filament spool on this design though, so that comes in a separate package and requires some assembly too. Now there are two versions available. The older version used 3D printed parts, although if you have a new printer direct from Prusa, chances are you have the newer version of the spool holder with the injection molded parts. So join me in the next video where we'll construct the spool holder and calibrate the printer. 